Well, everybody, it's Cantonese Cat here, and shooting my first video. I just want to talk maybe a little bit about the price action of Bitcoin. Here's the monthly chart, and I already have drawn out all the Fibonacci levels. To draw the Fibonacci levels are not hard. You just have to sign up for a um, TradingView account for free, and it really is completely free if you just use one or two indicators, which to my personal opinion, I think is all you really need. If you want to draw a Fibonacci level, usually I like to go from a top to a bottom. Some people like to go from bottom to the top. It's really a personal preference. I generally just go from top to bottom, and then you can show all the important um, psychological numbers right here to both humans and felines alike. These numbers generally, for whatever reason, maybe it's due to algorithms. Um, that also is a self-fulfilling prophecy that likes to follow these numbers. I do not know. But... Generally, these numbers can serve as an important resistance or support level. So, for example, if you look at the price action from the December candle, you can see that it got rejected at the 0.5 level. And on the next month in January, we actually hit all the way up to the 0.618, which is the golden ratio. This is also a very important psychological level as well. Um, often serve as important resistance or support. And as you can see, it went up there, got rejected, and it went back down and found support at the 0 0.5. Now, in this particular month, we start at the 0 0.5, and then right now we have overshot at the 0 0.618. Although the month is still early, we still don't know how the month is going to end, but it certainly looks promising. It's very possible that we might get rejected again, but maybe getting closer to the 0 0.618 level, or we can just break through. We'll see what happens. It's Bitcoin. Um, it's going to do its own thing. Now, another important thing about the Fibonacci level is actually when it gets to price exploration, when you're trying to figure out a price target and you don't really know when to take profit because there's really numb shells you can really chart to try to figure out price target when it gets above all time highs, right? Now, there are these important levels above that could potentially serve as target levels. Some people might disagree with that, but I just want to show you how important these levels are potentially. I'm just going to roughly draw it from not this past cycle, but the cycle before that. I'm going to draw it from the high right here, and I'm going to draw it all the way down to the low. And I'm going to actually drag and cover up a little bit further. So as you can see, if you just do a high to low right here, there are these very important levels, for example, the 0 0.618, where it got rejected. And after it got rejected, it was actually floundering for about two years before it got back above it again. This is how important of a rejection this was. And as you can see, you know, 0 0.5 is also a very important level down here. But once it really starts to tick off, it's really hard to figure out where you're going to take target. Once it passes all-time high, it just kept going. And it just kept going, going, going until it, last cycle it hits 3.618 level. It actually hits it twice. Um, it does make a little tiny bit of a um, higher high right here. Um, before the moving averages start rolling over. I, I, might so, I might show that to you in a little bit. But it seemed to respect some of these higher levels pretty well. As you can see, as it hit 3.618, went back down, where's the level that it went to? 1.618. And then it went back up, where's the level that it got stalled at temporarily? It's 2.618. And then it continued to went back up, trying to challenge it until they started saying that they're going to raise a bunch of rates and the global liquidity starts to really go down to gutter. And that's when it really starts plummeting. Um, it, it's um, very, very important to see what the past behavior is and try to extrapolate and see whether or not this could be potentially useful to this particular cycle. So again, I'm going to try, try to draw this um, roughly here from top to bottom. And if you see, let's say that any assets, there's a potential as time goes on after an exponential growth like Bitcoin had, it could potentially give you diminishing return. So if it does end up giving you diminishing return, let's say if we hit 1.618, that's still a six-digit Bitcoin. It's also very possible, and a lot of people are thinking about the possibility that it could hit 2.618, which is 
uh, basically a, a, a you know pretty high number up here. Um, it could potentially go up higher. I would not count on that, but um, these are some pretty general good locations where some people could potentially be taking profit from, and it's important to note them. Now, instead of looking at Fibonacci levels, I think I kind of beat it to death. There is one thing I want to show you, which is the monthly moving averages. And the best way, one of the best way I visualize it is through the Bollinger Bands, which is um, also going to give you a um, 20 month moving average right around here. The rule of thumb is this. And again, there's no you know scientific way. All of these things are more art than science anyway. But the rule of thumb is this. If you start seeing a longer moving average, like the 20 month moving average start to really crawl up like this, you are really looking at a start of a pretty powerful bull trend. So the last time it did that, for example, let's do reverse, right? Last time it did that, it starts to roll over and you can see that the 20 month moving average is trying to serve as a support here and it did for a little bit, but until it starts really to roll over, it becomes really weak support and that's when it fell down to the lower Bollinger Band. I think we're starting to see a little bit of reverse here as a trend change and you're really starting to see this acceleration of this moving averages going up. The last time this had happened, it was at the beginning of 2020. Even with that capitulation candle here in March of 2020, you can see that the longer term trend has not changed. And sure enough, it became a very, very powerful bull trend that lasted for the entire year, year and a half. Some would argue even longer, right? And then if you look at how before um, around 2018, you can start seeing it really, really start to roll over and you get to an inflection point where the price is no longer able to find support from this 20 month moving average and just falls over. This also shows you as the price goes up and moving the 20 month moving average up, it can anticipate a very powerful bull trend. We are at the inflection point right now and this could potentially go on another 12 to 18 months, we'll see. Another thing is you can also see that we had a little bit of a Bollinger Band squeeze right here, which generally tells you a big move is coming. And sure enough, it tends to bring on this move right here when it's above the 20 month moving average and the 20 month moving average is curling up. Price could potentially just keep riding along this upper Bollinger Band as it expands and it's pretty impulsive when this happens. I don't want to just look at Bitcoin in isolation, right? So for example, if you want to look into a correlative asset, what could it be? Well, some people say that, you know, if you look at the US dollar, you can see that um, there's usually inverse correlation relationship between the two. And as you can see, the US dollar or the 20 month moving average is really, really starting to roll over. It is currently dropped underneath of it. It's flat, so it's gonna be a pretty poor support. And sure enough, it fell underneath of it. And now it's doing a back test. I think there's a pretty high probability that this is gonna keep dropping and get rejected from here. And the 20 month moving average is gonna most likely gonna start rolling over to show you a trend change because you already can see a trend change. This is pretty bearish for the US dollar and pretty bullish for the um, for the risk assets like Bitcoin. Another thing I want to show you that um, is actually on the up and up that I think is actually pretty strongly correlated with Bitcoin is the Russell 2000 um, represented by I, I, um, IWM which is the ETF that generally people buy if they want to get exposure to uh, the Russell 2000 small caps. This thing has been lagging behind, obviously. And as you can see that there is a recent trend change right around here of the 20 month moving average. It is really starting to crawl up just like what Bitcoin is doing. Now, another thing to think about in terms of macroeconomics, you can think about the two year yield. You can really see that the two year 
um, yield instead of looking just like a bird with two bit you know two giant testicles you can really start seeing that is really really rolling over here the moving average is really trying to have a trend change isn't it and it's pretty interesting because you would think that is all Jerome Powell's power but it isn't the rate is going to do its own thing and the Fed is just going to follow the moving average is really trying to roll over and it tried to back test it a little bit and it is still kind of back testing a little bit but the trend doesn't lie is starting to roll over and is starting to really get underneath of the 20 month moving average and it's most likely going to drop now what the implication of that to the economy and to stocks i don't know i happen to think that in the setting of having increased liquidity and having a dropping rate both of those two things combined together could end up having a very powerful bull market for all of the very risky assets in my opinion now, i'm not sure i'm just a cat but if you also look at the 10 year 10 years also showing the very same thing now it did find some support here but you can really see the 20 month moving average is really starting to roll over i think there's a good chance that it doesn't find support here anymore it could go down and it could test support down here this horizontal range but the trend is changing guys i mean this is certainly something that is happening and it could be very much in favor of what bitcoin is gonna do now i'm just going back to bitcoin you can clearly see a trend change and i think that this could potentially get pretty impulsive the other thing to kind of show you in terms of charting is if you just zoom out and if you look at the rsi you can see that we are right there which is you know pretty far from the green usually for a impulsive bull market like bitcoin is about to start you can see that it i think we might be right around here you know there's probably still a lot of room to go i think we might be right around here there's still potentially a lot of room to go nobody really knows how high bitcoin goes guys and nobody really knows um but the thing is i think we're still pretty far away from it and when it gets impulsive and get pretty impulsive the monthly rsi can really go into the green zone some people keep on drawing this meme trend line from cycle to cycle and think that we might hit you know the top of the rsi maybe right around here closer to 90 who knows right but i think the point is that we might still be pretty far from it if you believe in psychoanalysis and you believe that whatever happened before this time really can mirror that now instead of showing you the bollinger band i'm going to show you one of my favorites one of my absolute favorite indicator which is the you know, ichimoku cloud with the monthly cloud you can see how initially my thesis was that it was going to do something very similar to the last cycle where it was just going to hit the top of the cloud maybe get over a little bit and then went back down and test the bottom of the cloud before continuation i really thought it was going to do something very similar um, but it didn't end up doing that actually what it ended up doing is it kind of slides through it like swiss cheese which is fine too i do think that this is a pretty important um level though where the um ichimoku cloud is i'll show you why again i'm not going to draw a perfect fibonacci level here but i do want to do a rough one to show you why i think it, the the cloud could potentially be important the reason why i think that is is if you overlay the fibonacci level you can see that the top of the cloud is actually roughly around 0 0.5 and the bottom of the cloud is actually roughly right around 0 0.5 the 382 all of these have been pretty important levels previously um i i really thought it was going to get rejected around you know 0 0.5 maybe go back down to test the bottom of the cloud around th uh, 0 0.382 but it didn't really end up doing that it just went straight through and it went above it now i'm still not ruling out the fact that there is a strong possibility that at some point it's going to keep going up but it's going to go down and it's going to find one of these levels to find support it before it keeps on bouncing up and it's very possible like my friend um, tommy is saying where you could potentially have something that could go all the way up to all-time high and then get rejected from around that area and it could go all the way down to 
this level and then may even go down a little bit before a bullish continuation. I don't know if anybody really knows what's going to happen. But it's just fascinating to me how these Fibonacci level actually line up with the Ichimoku clouds so well. Fibonacci level gives you psychological level. Ichimoku cloud gives you more of like a median picture rather than a moving average is more giving you like a median picture. So it tells you that there's a lot of price history that are spent around these Fibonacci levels, which to me are still very important levels. Now, I don't really think that Bitcoin is going to drop below these levels anytime soon and these can serve as very important support. One more thing I want to show you about the um, Ichimoku cloud is that it always gives you an extra indicator that goes along with it, which is the Tenkan line and the Kijun line. The Tenkan line is some people will actually draw the Tenkan as um, blue and the Kijun as red, um, you know, but everybody is uh, going to be a little bit different. The default here on trading view is actually the um, Tenkan line is actually red and the um, Kijun line is actually blue, which is not the conventional way, but it doesn't really matter. What matters is this. You have a moving average. Sorry, you have a moving median, um, which is the um, Tenkan line. When the Tenkan gets above um, Kijun, generally is thought to be bullish. I mean, obviously, until it rolls over and have a bearish cross, that's when you you know know that it's no longer bullish. And quite often, when the cross comes, there could be quite a little bit of delay. Same thing when the bullish cross comes, there could be a little bit of delay too. I mean, Bitcoin from here to there has been bullish for about a year and you don't see the um, bullish cross of the tank and engine until really about closer to a year after it uh, bottomed. As you can see here, when was the last time on the last cycle that the two really truly crossed is right around here. There is a possibility that the bullishness is just starting and that it could keep going up for quite some time. Now, same thing with the last cycle and the cycle before that, this is the cross. And it gave you some really impressive, impulsive price action afterwards. I've talked for closer to 20 minutes. I am tired. It's my first video. And uh, I apologize if I said anything offensive because I often do. But thank you for listening. My cat is calling me. I'm out. Bye.